Super Bale Sews. My name's Sarah, thanks for joining me today. Um, this weekend I went to the uh, knitting and stitching show at Alexander Palace. It's my first time going and I just thought I would share a bit about um, what it's like at those festivals if you've never been. Um, some of my tips that I learned because I've been to one um, the stitch festival I've been to earlier in the year which is a bit smaller um, but I learned a bit from my first visit there. But meant this time I was a lot more efficient. Um, so, on Saturday this week, I've been working all day, I was teaching all day, and then I have this lovely choir that I run, um, who are part of the Prince Salas Hospice Community Choir, um, and we had a concert on Saturday night, so I'd had a really busy day on Saturday, a really long day, and I got home late and I was thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't have booked anything to do tomorrow, but equally, I've been really excited about this for ages, um, and it was so worth the trip, it was a really beautiful day up there, and the views from Alexander Palace are amazing. Um, and I met lots of nice people and I bought lots of nice things. So my first tip that I learned from, well, I'll tell you actually what they, these things are in case you've never been. So it's sort of like an exhibition centre. Um, and what will happen is people from small businesses or um, specialist craft schools and things like that will come and they'll exhibit or they will sell things or they'll do workshops or talks or whatever, demonstrations, all of these sorts of things. So it's not just sewing, obviously there are people with doing knitting, embroidery, um, there were all sorts of different crafts there. So if you're a crafty person, um, especially in terms of fabric, they had sort of artists who work with fabric and all sorts of really interesting things, then it's um, definitely worth a visit. And also a lot of the exhibitors are people who don't have stores, so you can buy stuff online but they don't necessarily have a store you can go and visit. So it's a really good um, way to see things, if there's something you're thinking about buying for example, you, but you want to see it for real before you order it, then you could go and see it there and you meet the people behind the business and stuff. It's a really nice day out. Um, so the mistake I made when I went to the Stitch Festival is I didn't have a plan. And then when I got there, it's quite overwhelming. And I bought loads the first time I went, but a lot of it was not stuff that I actually needed. Um, and it's all lovely stuff, but a lot of it's stuff I haven't actually used. So this time I went with a plan. What are things I want to make in the next couple of months? Um, and what are specific things that I need or would like to help with those projects and that was a lot more efficient I've come away I, I was there to shop like I made a decision before I went I'm here to shop but I've bought things that I know I'm going to sew up in the next month or two um, and some cute little extras as well but I generally am quite pleased with myself so um, right so I'll just show you so the first thing one of the projects I mentioned in my last video is um, the Vivian Coat by Sew Over It, which is from their Vintage Dreaming ebook. I keep wanting to call it a Vintage E Dreaming book. There was nothing E about the dreaming. The Vintage Dreaming ebook has the Vivian Coat, which is a beautiful long wool coat. Um, I've actually got the wool to show you today. So the wool was gifted by Minerva.com. Uh, it's boiled wool. The colour always comes across not quite right on the screen, but it's basically the cut. It's the shade is called Sangria. Um, and it's sort of pink, a bit pinker when it comes across. So it's like a dark, reddy pink colour. Really, really nice. Now, after a lot of thinking, I decided that a pale pink is probably the colour that would go best. But I wanted a like a bold lining. Um, I made a Nova coat, which is um, a sort of more, I think it's called a cocoon shaped jacket, um, from Paper Cut Patterns last year, out of like teal boucle. And then I um, lined it with this Lady McElroy I think it's called Botswana Cotton Lawn, which has giraffes all over it. And it just, like, really cheered me up every time I looked at it. So I wanted something a bit more interesting, but I was feeling very uninspired. Um, and anyway, I stopped by Fabric Godmother, and they have this beautiful... Oh, that's going to be upside down. Hang on. This beautiful um, sateen. So I think it's still... Oh, how am I getting this up down, upside down still when I just rearranged it? Anyway, so it's called... I think the print is called Cheating Hearts because as you can see, it sort of looks like a cheetah print. But there are little hearts, very cute. Um, and it's this one's a pale pink. Um, and then you've got sort of a purpley, magenta-y and red colours in the hearts. Um, as I said, this is satin, sort of slides on and off nicely. With the Nova coat, the fit is a bit looser, so... Um, I got away with a lawn, but obviously normally for a coat you want something really slippery. Um, I think that's going to look super, super cute together actually. Super cute. Um, I also have my eye on some buttons, but I, I got some insider knowledge about some specialist coat buttons that are on the way. So I'm going to wait and see though if those would fit and um, yeah, 
and then so I'll let you know what, what buttons I end up with when I've made the coat. Um, but this this fabric comes in, I think they have, I can't remember what the base is, I, like I don't think they're all satins, but um, they have this in different colourways. So there's like one that's like a really nice green, I think there's one on sort of a more mustardy base. Um, yeah, so I'm actually really pleased with that. Um, this is one of those things where I would never buy this colour to just make a garment for myself because I think the pale pink sort of washes me out a little bit. But um, with the combination of this, I think it's going to look really nice. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, so that's that. And I also bought some thread to go with that. So that's my coat. Um, next up, the other thing on my list in terms of fabric was that I wanted to make a sort of winter pyjamas loungewear set. Um, and I was already eyeing up by Graziella. Um, who do these really nice, like, bold graphic um, jerseys and sweatshirtings and um, French terry. They, they, I think they have other bases as well, but those are, like, the main ones. Um, and I was um and ah over jersey for ages, and then I spotted this, which is actually, at the time of me filming this, was not available on their website. Um, I don't think it had been released yet, but they were selling it at the Knitting and Stitching Show, which is, again, why it's good to go to these things. And it's this gorgeous sweatshirting fabric in a sort of sage green I'm really bad at showing these aren't I I'm like um <laughs> in a sage green it's got a, a lovely soft um fleece on the underside and again I'm really bad I just had that right in front of my face didn't I um but I just love the colour and the the pattern you know you've got like uh, just a full heart and then you've got these ones that have little teeny hearts cut out of the big heart I just think it's super cute so I'm going to make um, like a loungewear set um, with those and I'm going to mix and match patterns. So I'm going to try, so previously I made sort of winter pyjamas last year using the Stella Joggers pattern from the Tilly and the Button stretch book. Now the sizing in that book is more limited um, and this that was one of the really early things I sewed. So I adjusted the pattern to fit myself. So I'm just going to use the pattern I've already adjusted. But just be aware that the sizing in that book is original Tilly sizing, not extended sizing so just check the chart on the back before you buy anything and then for the top I'm going to make uh, just cashmere they have I think it's called the Stanway tee which is like a raglan sleeved t-shirt um, in the ahead of the curve book which is a must-have book for anyone but especially if you are curvy it has loads of adjustments it has some really nice patterns um I will share a bit more about that probably in a future post but that's what I'll, so I'll mix and match to make that little cute set so that's that. By Graziella is a bit more pricey. The quality is really good. Um, so I had decided before I went that I was open to investing because this is going to be, I'm planning on lounging around loads when I'm off work. So um, yeah, and I'm hoping these are going to last. So uh, yeah, that's more of an investment if you want something like a treat for yourself. Um, the only other fabric I bought was from the lovely Pigeon Wishes. Now it was really nice to meet Meg and her husband. I've interacted with Pigeon Wishes and with Meg um, a lot on Instagram, bought stuff from them before. They specialise in buttons um, and then they also have um, sustainable a selection of sustainable fabrics. So the fabric I bought is this jersey. It's like, I don't know if you can see on the camera, it's like ribbed, like ribbed jersey uh, and it's glittery. So this is to make a pansy dress for one of my goddaughters who she likes pink sparkly rainbows. I, th I feel like that's her vibe at the moment so um I'm going to make her a pansy dress which is from Poppy and Jazz which is sort of the, the children's pattern part of Sew Over It um and they have some really cute kids patterns I have made loads of the pansy dress which is like a, a jersey dress and the strawberry sweatshirt um they're just really easy patterns they're very very quick to sew you can make them up with um sort of scraps from other things you've made and they're very, they're really comfy and practical. So I've occasionally I'll make something that's like just, you know, they'll wear once. And it, whereas these sorts of things, the pansy, I mean, one of my godchildren, I gave her a pansy dress, you know, a year and a half ago and she's still wearing it and uh, very keen on it. So yeah, so if you're looking for easy, practical kids patterns, look at Poppy and Jazz, but that's what that's going to be. I also, um, at Pigeon Wishes, couldn't resist picking up some buttons. Now these are all really, really gorgeous. I don't know, the light's a bit funny, isn't it? Um, but if you don't know about uh, Pigeon Wishes, they do just these really, really beautiful coloured buttons. This is a collaboration with Paige Joanna, lovely green, and then these bigger ones. Don't have any fixed projects for these, but I'm always making sort of shirts and shirt dresses, so um, it's just nice stock up, isn't it? 
Right, patterns. I couldn't resist stopping by Tilly the Patterns. I keep saying I couldn't resist. And to be honest, yesterday I couldn't resist anything. So, um, yeah, I went to see Tilly and the Buttons. I'd seen on their Instagram that they had some of the samples from the shoots I did with them on display, which I wanted to see. Um, and I took a really cool picture because that's my vibe. That's basically what I went there for, to have a picture with the mannequin. Um, it was it's just nice to see stuff and be like, oh, that's my size. Uh, I think if you're used to things not being sort of inclusive in your size, it's just very exciting to see things that are. Um, but also I wanted to pick up a Marnie um, pattern, which... I had, uh, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, but there are a couple of things in it that are not things that I would normally go for in a garment I'm making. So partly it's because the uh, the way the seam, basically the, the main part of the bodice hangs from above the bust. I'm busty. I normally like things that come in at the waist or where the seam sits at the waist because it sort of draws the eye there. Um, and then also, like, I love, they have these little, I'll put a picture up here because it's easier than me shoving this in front of my face. Um... They have the these like pin tuck waves, which I think are so pretty and I can't wait to do. The sleeves, glorious, love them. Um, and then there are these extra frills. So I was a bit like, oh, is it too, I'm not girly girl. So I was like, is it a bit too much for me? But actually the way it's designed, it's very modular. So you can sort of bring in as many elements. So you could just have it actually as a really simple top or dress. Um, or you can add all of the bells and whistles or you can pick your bells and whistles. Um, and I've seen so many other people's that are really, really lovely. So I just thought, nah, you know, I've got to do it. So I've bought this and I'm, I've got so much fabric in my stash I could use. I'm not 100% decided. I sort of want something to show off some pin tucks. So I'm going to have to think. But um, yeah, so it was so nice to see the Tilly and the Buttons crew and um, to see some of their samples and to see all of their lovely patterns. They had a new pattern as well. Um, the, I think it's a Stevie top, which is like a woven top, which is super cute in its full size range. Um, and the other thing I picked up when I was at Fabric Godmother was the sagebrush from Friday Pattern Company. I've been looking for, I'll put the line drawing up here, but I've bas basically been trying to find um, more autumn, winter appropriate blouses for work. Um, so I want stuff that's like high neck, um, gives good coverage, but like looks kind of nice. So um, this one, as you can see, it's got the fill detail across here. The puff sleeves, I'll probably make them a little bit longer just because I prefer to have like maybe just below the elbow um but yeah I have lots of really cute fabric for mind for these I think I'll probably make a few um again that's one where when I first saw it because of the seam sitting across the bus I was a bit like eh. but I've seen so many different versions on all different body types and they just look great so I'm really excited to make that um the dress I'm wearing actually is also Friday Pattern Company this is the wild gown really easy quick sew it used a lot of fabric it's very sort of billowy um, but again, it's it's modular, so you can sort of add in, you know, the skirt can be full length or it can be really short. It can be a top. It can be, um, yeah, there are lots of different things you can do with it. So that's what this is. Uh, the fabric is from Minerva, but I purchased it. This is something I made very early on. So um, this before I had the brand ambassador thing. So I purchased that myself. Um, and you can sew a tie uh, as part of the pattern, but I used this velvety ribbon. Um, because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to turn out a whole long time. Um, yeah, so other little bits and bobs I bought. I'll try and keep this short. Um, one of the other things on my list that I really wanted to get and I missed out on at the Stitch Festival was one of the Ethel and Joan uh, magnetic pin dishes. Now, I don't have anything magnetic to show you, but I'm sure you know how magnets work. Um, they do them, they do basically all of this stuff, it's re resin. Um, so they have these and they have buttons and they have um, uh, what they call like buckles and uh, earrings, things, hair clips, things like so it's all resin, all in these really cute colours. Um, and I also bought something which again I believe wasn't released, wasn't available online prior to the Stitch Show, I don't know if it is now, but it's a very mini version that you sort of um, put on yourself as like a badge, you could put it here or you could put it on your sleeve and it means like just when you're on the go, you can pop the, it's magnetic again, so you can just pop your pins on there. Um, I, my fiance hates it because I'm always leaving pins everywhere, accidentally. Just get away from me, don't know how it is. But so anyway, so this is my attempt at being more organised with my pins and hopefully leaving less of them all over the floor. Um, yep, so they're very lovely. And then I've only got a couple more to show you, I promise. So then I went to Little Rosy Cheeks. Now this is one of my favourite small businesses. Um, it was really nice. 
to meet Victoria as well, who um, I've interacted with a lot on Instagram and she's just so lovely and her products are great. So she specializes in um, labels and they always have really cute designs, like bright designs and nice cute little messages. So most of my labels are little rosy cheeks. Um, so I popped on by to have a look. I restocked on these ones, which are some of my favorites that I already have. So these ooh, are handmade, but in sort of glittery writing. Um, and as I said, I, I already had these and just wanted more because I like to use them in pretty much everything. So I restocked on those. I also went for the collab with Bargello. Now, um, Bargello is run by the lovely Narissa, who I met doing a hobbycraft shoot. And um, she runs Bargello. And she's also on the cover of the new Narissa Quilty Coat pattern by Biohan London, which looks really, really nice. So she's overall a queen of crafts. Um, and she also runs Bargello, which is a sort of, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but it's like a, a sort of stitching um craft and uh narissa has designed all these really beautiful patterns and these kits um it's just very pretty craft so uh, anyway they have this collab and i was just drawn towards these because they were so like sunshine so this one your limited edition um craft couture and i made this and these will probably show up backwards is that how these things work but anyway they're not backwards in real life um and the patterns i just thought they are just like sunshine in a label um and the patterns on here mimic sort of the patterns that um you can make with some of the bargello kits so if you like that vibe check out bargello um the bargello edit on instagram and all manner of other things so anyway i bought those and then i also got some buttons so i didn't know that rosy uh, little rosy cheeks i was gonna say rosy that's not her name. Uh, that Little Rosy Cheeks did buttons, um, but they do just for the craft shows, I think. So these are like vintage style ones that I just thought were very cute. So I'm just going to add them into my button stash. And then I'm also always a little bit messy with my buttons, uh, not my buttons, with my labels. So I'll put them in and then as they sew, they'll go a bit squiff. So I wanted to just get some things to neaten them up. Um, this little transparent label ruler is for placement. And then also... A fabric glue pen so you can glue them in place before you do the sewing because mine always start in a good position and they sort of get like pushed slightly out by the the foot the presser foot sometimes so this is just to make sure that they stay put and that they have really neat labels um the last few things are a bit boring so i bought some maraflex thread this is to make um tilling the buttons pearl which is like a wrap cardigan um in navy again this workwear so i'm just trying to get some more autumnal workwear in um and maraflex is just it's so satisfying sewing stretch items with a straight stitch and it's a lot quicker and it uses a lot less thread. So that's that. And then I went to the fast stall and I bought some more bobbins and I was actually looking for an invisible zipper foot, which they'd run out of, but I then bought a gathering foot. I hate gathering. I hate it. I hate it when the thread snaps. I hate to make them even. I just hate it. So I bought this. I don't really know how it works. Um, I'm going to play around with it and see because I don't know how you get it to gather to the exact amount that you want because obviously some things say you know you've got twice the length that you actually need and so you're gathering more or you might have something that's just half the length again in which case you don't need to gather as much how does it know I don't know I'm going to play around with it and try and work that out um I'll probably watch some YouTube videos about it um but yeah that was my haul from the knitting and stitching show I am really pleased I yeah I had it was just a really nice day met lots of really nice people I feel a lot more satisfied with my purchases than I was from the last one because as I said I actually planned what I wanted and so it meant I had some focus so I was like I need I need something to make either pajamas or loungewear I need something to line my coat with so it was just a lot more clear and also I checked out the list of exhibitors um before which also helped because I then had a little list of like I definitely want to see xyz um and it just means when you're in there and everything's like that you have something to direct you around a bit because it can be a lot I think just I mean there's there's beautiful stuff absolutely everywhere so um yeah so that'd be my main tip if anybody wants to go next year like I was there on my own I had a good time um but equally if anyone wants to go next year or meet up I tend to go on Sunday because that's the day I'm not working um but We'll see what I can do. It depends on the dates. 
but um yeah it would be lovely i had such a nice time meeting people and i'd love to um meet some more like-minded um fabric addicts that'd be great so um thank you so much i hope you've enjoyed that um i will be my next vlog will be uh, a bit of a mix of things so i'm going wedding dress shopping uh this next weekend so it, it might be some bits and bobs from from that and talking about my plans for the wedding dress that i'm going to make um for the evening do and then also i'm going away with the dog next week and i'm going to be doing uh, bits and bobs of sewing i'm going to be in county durham which is where my parents um houses and i'm going to go up there and i'm going to do lots of sewing might be visiting a couple of different shops um yeah so that's where we're at thank you again for tuning in if you've enjoyed this video if you like a bit of chit chat please feel free to comment um and also like and subscribe all right thanks so much bye